<laughs> my soul's literally glowing i'm so 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 excited welcome back to another episode of happy Olay podcast this episode is so special and so dear to my heart because we are joined by the one and only magical incredible amazing chelsea the sabotage queen aka soul sister just like being in your presence makes my soul purr to like the ultimate volume you are just the most incredible beautiful delightful intelligent brilliant human being to walk the face of this earth i I'm just so excited to have this conversation with you and see wherever our souls may take us. I feel like we're just boarding a happy ho little spaceship here and we're just going to like into the ethers and see where we go. But Chelsea, hello, hello. Do you want to say hello and introduce yourself and just like let your presence be felt on this podcast? Let it be felt. Hello, I'm Chelsea. As you said, I never know how to introduce myself. I'm always like very awkward. Um, <laughs> um, Brandon didn't know that I could be awkward. Brandon's my fiance. Um, well, I I was, he didn't know. And then like, literally we've been dating, like dating forever. And then we were at this gas station. This is so weird. It was like a self pump gas station or like they pump for you. And I didn't oh. know that. And so then this guy like came and he kind of like was standing at my window and I was like, uh, and then I like, he was like standing there and like, well, I wasn't paying attention that I like rolled the window down and I was like, uh, and I don't know. It was just like this whole awkward thing. And Brandon was like, what the fuck was that? why did you make that so awkward? And then I got so mad. I was like, do you think I wanted to make it awkward? Like, <laughs> I don't know. That's a random thing. <laughs> I feel like I'm the same though. Like I have an awkward turtle persona where I just kind of go like, mm. <laughs> and I just like my shoulders shrug in and I make this weird turtle face that my mom makes. And I'm just like, hi guys. So I feel like this is the best way to introduce ourselves on, on any sort of podcast or in human interaction is like, hi, I'm an awkward turtle. Let's get that out of the way. And like, let's now converse like human beings, whatever. <laughs> Pretend to be human beings. I can do that <laughs> I know, right? for an hour. <laughs> That's how I feel. I'm like, am I just like a mermaid alien? Like, moonlighting as a human being uh -huh. I actually used to think that when I was a kid I had this thought I was like I think I'm actually a dinosaur and I'm having a dream about being a human and my entire existence and this entire world is made up in my mind and so oh my god about that and I'm like what if girl were you like did somebody give you mushrooms that's like crazy big thoughts to nope. be <laughs> you know it's like a seven-year-old my sister and I are like what if we're actually dinosaurs but I'm pretty happy being a human being slash a bird slash a cat. So we'll run with that. But actually, Chelsea and I were having a very like juicy conversation before we hit record. And we were like, bitch, we need to hit record because everything we're talking about is like pure magical gold. And one thing that you've been speaking to lately, Chelsea, that has been like, <sighs> like, I don't even know how to like describe how much my body has responded to just like, please shout this from the rooftops but this concept of living 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 over healing and living first and of course as human beings we all have things to heal we all go through seasons of healing and beauty and in magical self-reflection and personal development and things like that but sometimes we can start to use personal development and healing as a weapon against ourselves and i know i experienced this a lot in my journey with healing autoimmune disease when you try so hard to heal, but then the trying to heal and the gripping to healing actually prevents you from living your life and <laughs> like enjoying the human existence that your soul came here to experience. But yeah. I'm curious, what, what like provoked this like current era where you're just like, we need to live people. Like, I know it was like, you know, in real life, like hot girl summer and everything yeah. where it's like, let's like, fucking like get off the fucking internet get off our fucking phones and like actually talk to a human being and like give a stranger a compliment which by the way you've inspired I just have to say Chelsea you if, if first of all if you don't know Chelsea if you're somehow like living under a rock like I'm gonna link her Instagram to in the show notes like run just like her your way over to her Instagram everything she share her stories are like a whole ass like reality tv show they're so enjoyable to watch <laughs> like I swear to God, Chelsea <laughs> I'm just like, you are an entertainer to like the top tier you are just like 
God tier entertainment. <laughs> like you just radiate like hell, just like humor, deliciousness, like just magic. But oh, I lost uh, my train of thought because I was just like so enamored. But oh, you're talking about hot girl summer, and then you were saying I think that that impacted you, or that you had a story to tell me. That's right. That's right. Yes, like. I have been inspired to like talk to strangers more. Like I've been giving people compliments basically everywhere I go. Like I'm like, oh, I love your dress or like, oh my God, I love your shoe. Like I just, I feel like I'm just opening up more and, and focusing on yes. connecting with people in real life, even if it's just for a moment, which again, it speaks to this concept of like fucking live, connect with humans. Yes. Anyone human connection yes. is here for. So I will let you speak. Like what oh. evoked this? Oh my God. Well, what you were just saying, I'm like, make as much contact with life as you can. Ooh. And I think like, we forget that, you know what I mean? Like, it, and I loved that you brought the focus to like these micro moments. I'm so sorry. I have the windows open. So my door is like rumbling a little. I'm oh like, yeah. No, go take care of it. Do whatever you, I feel like on this podcast, we're not the kind of podcast where we're like, Ooh, we need to edit this moment out because it's like yeah. awkward. We're like, we're here for the awkward turtles. We're here for the, like my cat just jumped in my lap and his booty is in my face. Like <laughs> that's Luna P, like every other client call, I swear to God, Luna P's like puts his butt in the camera. And I'm like, Luna P we're trying to like do a breath work or like a meditation here. You can't just stick your butt in the camera. Like we need to start you an OnlyFans if that's what you need to do but anyways <laughs> it's not only fans for luna p that would just fucking crack my shit up like kitty butthole like i <laughs> never know like people got people got kings <laughs> we'll have kings oh my god um dude the last podcast i was on we ended up talking about cannibalism and now we're talking about like bestiality kind of and i'm like what is this like well, I'm actually, I'm crying. My eyes are watering. Okay. Living. Living. Living like, uh, I love what you said, like connecting with life. Like, uh. yeah, making as much contact with life as you can. And like you said, these brief moments matter. Like, you know, this morning we were, I was walking the dogs and I really feel like when you take this mindset on, like God universe presents you so many more opportunities. And, and I do, I feel grateful for the little moments. And I like give myself a star, even if I, I have a little conversation, I'm like, Oh, I talked to a stranger for 10 seconds. That's enough. You know what I mean? Um, they, they were playing tennis. I had the dogs and one of their tennis balls had fallen like out. He was like, can you grab that tennis ball for me? I was like, yeah, of course. So I like gave it to him. He's like, have a great day. And I was like, you have a great day. And like, just these little moments, it makes the world feel smaller in like the best way. And you never know the ripple effect, like not only for yourself, but for other people, right? Um, fuck, we need to live. Like we are, it's, it's sad to me a little bit that this concept is such a breath of fresh air for people because it's like, how far have we fallen like from Eden? You know what I mean? That like the concept of actually living is like, fucking water in the middle of the desert like it's sad it's scary but like I'm glad that it's arriving I've seen other people talking about it it's like it just burst through me Michelle I don't know like you kind of asked like what's been leading to this moment I'm like my whole fucking life like and I feel like I didn't see it do you know what I mean like I've I've been in personal development since I was like 10 or 11 years old and I used to say that with such like proud peacock energy like puffing my chest up and being like I've been in the industry since I was 10 and now I'm like holy fuck I've been in personal development since I was a child and I would not wish it on my worst fucking enemy like the shit like the healing shit like gave me trauma like personal development gave me trauma and I know that sounds heavy-handed but I'm like it's fucking true it made my OCD worse like it, it had me psychoanalyzing every little thing that I did, every thought that I had. Am I manifesting this? Am I attracting this? Like, am I a bad person? Um, it had me as a child holding off in my room, journaling, trying to do the turnaround or tapping to get rid of an emotion. And, I, and I'm not like shitting. Like, I, I love tapping. You know what I mean? Like, I love these things, but it's like, I just don't think it was what a child needs or what I needed. Like I needed life. I needed a hug. I needed just like, you know what I mean? And, and like experience life and like touch nature. Yeah. Like a child should not be thinking like, did I manifest this sickness at like 12? Like how did I manifest this pink eye? And then looking at like 
that fucking I can't remember what's the book that like Kennedy. gives you, you can know your life yeah all of the yes. physical I, of- I actually got that book when I first started healing autoimmune disease and for a time it was healing but yes. it's, we have to be so discerning of like at what point does it stop being healing yes. and start being detrimental and I feel like it's like that like line to walk or even like for example I love that you mentioned tapping because it's like I love EFT tapping I do tapping all the time and sometimes it's like this feeling of like oh I'm feeling anxiety I should tap on it and it's like or I could just like fucking go about my day like I don't it's not always like we're having this emotion and it needs to be resolved or it needs to be felt or it needs to be processed sometimes it's just like go hug a tree and like sit by a river and like maybe you'll feel less anxious because you're remembering that you're a part of nature like I feel like it's it's using the tools that we learn with sacred discernment to know when is this actually healing for me versus when is this bringing me further away from myself? Because once healing starts to bring you further away from yourself, it's like, it's not fucking healing anymore. It's not. It's something else. It's something fucking else. And I think we can be so, I was just on a podcast with Hannah Kovoy. Is that how you say her last name? Um, oh, and, and we were um, talking about, she's amazing. Um she was sharing her experience of like being surrounded by tools and kind of like pulling herself off, like barricading herself with tools. I like from life, we barricade ourselves from life with these tools. And like, that's when I think it becomes a problem. And I think part of this too, it's, it's so funny. Um, this was so random, but me and Brandon were having a conversation a couple of years ago about like monogamy versus polyamory and kind of having like a debate um and we're both monogamous but I was just kind of like we were just having a debate and then I like googled this YouTube and I was like about polyamory and then it ended up being this whole different conversation it was like one of the most powerful YouTubes I've ever watched where this guy was talking about how um spiritual new age people are um basically how would I explain this less healthy I wouldn't say that that's how he said it but he basically was saying that like new age spiritual people um we've become so individualistic and Mm -hmm. we have all these self-healing tools these self-care things and when we're in a relationship instead of having interdependency where we are able to um calibrate to each other and help recalibrate each other's nervous systems we're trying to yeah. Yes, we're trying to attune our own nervous systems alone in a room with journaling or with this technique or that technique or whatever, instead of actually being vulnerable enough to be with a partner and allow yourselves to heal together without all these tools. And it was just like so fucking profound, you wow. know? That That is so powerful. And even as you spoke that, I was like, even when we think of human history, and the ways in which humans used to gather and connect to each other and like braid each other's hair and women used to come together to dance and just all these things. It was like, it wasn't each person individually like hold away in their bedroom. Like, okay, I need to journal. What, what is happening? What is wrong with me? Yeah, it's like, go process your shit by yourself. Yeah, I was like, of course, like moments of self-reflection and being alone are beautiful. Like, and I feel like as human beings, it's like, we're not meant to just do everything alone and I feel like that's kind of where the healing versus living can come into place oftentimes when we think of like healing and personal development it's like okay it's this thing that I do by myself like hold away alone in my room versus living is actually healing because we're out there like what you said like just experiencing this connection to life and other living beings or even if it's like nature and trees it's like feeling like feeling connected to other human heartbeats in and of itself is so magical. It is, it's so healing. And even when you spoke about your OCD, I mean, I forget exactly when we connected Chelsea. It was probably, was it in 2021? Like the end of 2021, I feel like it must've been. I feel like it was November or something like that, or I can't even remember exactly, but I, I still remember like the moment that I found your profile on Instagram. I think it was through the Marketing Miracle like Facebook group or something with Rebecca. And I was like, who is this? And I went on your Instagram. Like I was literally sitting in my, I told you this story before, but I was sitting in my dermatologist's office and I was like, who is this? And I was like, Ooh. I like scrolled like really far fucking back on your Instagram <laughs> to the time when you did like the photo shoots with the cards and stuff. And I was like, oh my God icon <laughs> and and just 
having gotten to know you, you know, through these last few years and just witness your evolution one, like in healing your OCD. I remember when you first started to speak to that, I was like, holy fuck. Yes. I was just like, yes. Like, especially because, you know, for me having autoimmune disease and having that healing journey of the same thing, right. Where it's like the hyper vigilance around like healing and symptom management and just like all of these things. It's like, it actually was making my health worse. It was like that, like hyper vigilance and focus on healing was actually sucking my life force dry versus when I started to just be like, what if I made some friends? And like, what if I just tried to live my life and stop focusing on like, am I healing? Am I backsliding? Is my healing going away? It's just like, I feel when we can almost like, how do I describe it? What I'm seeing right now is like, sometimes we, again, like our healing tools become weapons and it's like, we're holding these weapons against ourselves. And it's like, sometimes the best thing we can do is like, put the weapons down, go make some friends, go experience life, go do some bird watching in my case, bird photography, Uh like connect with other living things. And I'm curious for you and your journey with OCD, what it was like to, I mean, one, start to recognize as, as your symptoms started to diminish and then coming to this place of like, wait, like, am I in remission? <laughs> like, <laughs> <what am> my life? <laughs> For me with autoimmune disease, it was like, it kind of like came into my life and it was this like wrecking ball. And then the healing process was this like, ugh, ugh, ugh. it was like, this like so difficult. It was so heavy. And then it was like, at some point when I put down the healing weapons and just like decided to enjoy my life a little bit and like stop being so hyper-focused on like, all the diets and the supplements and like seeing my doctor every two months uh, for any little symptom. It was like slowly without me even realizing it. I was like, wait, I haven't thought about my symptoms in like weeks. Like I haven't been uh, worried. About, and then I was like, wait, like I feel v- v- my vitality. I feel healthy. I was like, am I in remission? <laughs> and it just like crept, it's like snuck up on me in a way. And it was beautiful, but I'm curious uh, what your experience was like. Oh my God. I, uh, it brought me to my knees, like the beginning of the remission. I was like brought to my knees like every day, just little baby moments. Um, as you know, and your story is so fucking beautiful. And I love how our journeys have like paralleled um a lot. Hello, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it just brought me to my knees. Like every time that I would realize that I wasn't obsessing or ruminating on something I was just staring into space or just living or just actually like enjoying a moment with someone and not ruminating at the same time and I'm just present and it's just like oh my god like life has never been so sweet like what the fuck is this what people experience without OCD I'm like this is fucking sick (laughs) you know it's like oh it's just like being reborn, you know, it, I mean, still I have moments where I'm like, holy shit, I'm just being, you know, and I'll have flickers of little OCD things, but it's, don't make it mean something. Yes. It's nothing like it was like, it's just nothing like it was. And I'm able to be present. And I think that is the biggest thing. And it's just so funny how all the dominoes have fallen to where now I'm, you know, talking about what I am talking about because, I don't feel like I could have until I got to this place, you know? No, I'll have to, hearing you say that out loud, Chelsea, like my, my whole being is just like overflowing with happiness for you. One, because like, I really understand what that's like to just like have those moments when you're like, I can exist and I can just live. And there's not this like cloud over my mind or this like heaviness, like on my shoulders or in my heart. And you're just like, it it really does bring you to your knees. It like reminds you to take a breath and just be like, wow, I'm here. And life is really fucking good. I just get to be here. And I love that you mentioned that. I feel like we have really had a lot of parallels in our soul's journeys and even in our healing, but also in our businesses. And I would love to get your thoughts and your soul musings around even applying this concept of living over healing to entrepreneurship and business up on Instagram and all these things, because I feel like it's the same concept fucking applies so deeply to entrepreneurs and business, as well as also 
not being afraid to shift and let yourself evolve. Because I feel like both of us, like (laughs) Chelsea and I have been in a mastermind, Rebecca's mastermind together for a while now. And it's just been so beautiful to witness us kind of like traverse really similar landscapes within like, oh, what are we doing in our businesses? And I mean, I'm making some noise. I, I fucking completely agree. Like, and it's been so cool because Michelle has gone first a lot of the times. And then I'm like in it and I'm like, oh, she just went through this. Like, I guess I can make it out the other side alive in one piece because she did it. And I'm like, fuck, you know? And I realized that you had to go first so many times because I, I feel like you've gone first too. I just feel like it's so, I mean, this is, again, this is the gift of fucking living over healing is like, here we are just like having this beautiful conversation and we're like right. about our, our journeys and, and just the healing that's happened, not through us being like, okay, child, like, what are you healing through? And how can I like take the nutrients? It's more just like, I'm going to witness you do your thing and we're going to be friends and we're going to talk and we're going to play and we're going to have conversations, but it's not always about like, okay, let's like fix the thing or like find the problem. Right. Because I know for me, and this also speaks to for people, if you grew up in an environment where you're used to chaos and just always having to overthink everything and overanalyze everything because that's what would keep you safe, it's oftentimes as adult we carry that as adults we carry that same conditioning into our businesses where it's like we look for problems and fires that don't fucking exist because we are more accustomed to living in the chaos and sometimes it's like okay, like if you find yourself ruminating all the problems in your business or the things that are going wrong on your Instagram or whatever, it's like, pause and be like, wait, what if I just like took myself out on a solo date and like enjoyed my day and like fucked off my business and didn't even think about it and then came back tomorrow? It's like, you'd be surprised how often you're like, oh, maybe there's not a problem. And I was just uh, looking for problems. But yes. like, what um, if like like what's actually happening I feel like like what if there isn't a fucking problem and oh my god I had a way to say it that I was like this is good and now it popped out of my head everything you're saying is a big fat yes to me I'm just like you know we drive ourselves nuts I feel like it's one of the biggest sabotage like sneaky sabotage insidious sabotage things is like like you're saying, cultivating chaos where there is none and like, oh, there's a fire or I need to go find a fire and I need to figure out how to put it out. And it's like, whoa, nothing is happening. There's actually no problem. Like if you just get back to like, I used to say, and this was like a playoff of Stephen Pressfield's words, but it was like, sit down, shut the fuck up and do your work. Like create your art. Your work is your art. Sit down, shut the fuck up, do your fucking work. Like, I don't care about all that other crazy shit. Like we can talk about that later. But get your work done. And there's no discipline, I feel like, a lot of times. We have no... Yes. I think for the feminine, there is a lot in the coaching and healing industry of um, there's no discipline mentally and emotionally. We kind of let our our crazy like not craziness but like problem creating monsters just go buck wild and then we're like oh and I have to heal this wound and that thing before I can show up and be visible online because of something that happened a million years ago and it's valid right but it's also like okay I get it you're scared everyone's fucking scared so just tip your toe in and see that you don't die and then we'll do it again and we'll do it again and the wounds can come with you but stop Fix the wound before you live your life. Cause that I'm not here for. And I won't stand by why people waste their lives away. I just won't. It's too short. I've seen it firsthand. Like I'm a no for that. I'm a yes for living, you know? <laughs> My whole body was just like, Bro. I just got so many chills. Like, yes. It's like, I, I just like, I feel your soul, Chelsea. It's like, you are just a stand for, I will not watch as human beings suffer when they don't need to suffer I will not stand for people to make themselves miserable when there's joy and delight and happiness like literally like you just have to reorient yourself like two yes. degrees this way like it's not even like it has to be a big thing yes. again it's not like you have to like overcome all these hurdles to finally stop healing it's just like no just one day wake up and just like titrate the safety to do something different whether that's like you said do the one post on social media and be like, even though 
I got bullied as a child and showing up feels really fucking scary because I'm scared strangers on the internet are going to tear me apart for my appearance or what I have to say or whatever it is. It's like, yes, like you could spend two years with your therapist healing with that or working with a coach healing with that. And it's like, of course, like fucking applaud that. Like, yes, like heal. Yes, 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 heal. And it's the idea that you have to put your life on pause while you heal. And it's like, no, 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 you they can, they can coexist. You can, can heal and live at the same time. Yes. And you don't have to wait for this perfectly regulated nervous system to live your life. Actually living your life is going to help you regulate your fucking nervous system. But I think we, um, we coddle ourselves a little bit in our nervous systems. And we're like, I'm not going to do anything that like jolts me at all. And it's like, well, that's not the solution in my opinion. You know, people ask like, how'd you get so expressed? Like it wasn't sitting Mm -hmm. around waiting to be perfectly regulated and unafraid and all this shit, you know, like that's a lie. And I think we have to be, we have to be a little more trusting. We have to be the parents who are willing to let their kids fall and and cut up their knees, learning to ride a bike. You can't be like, I can never get a, a bruise or a wound or a skin knee or bleed a little bit. Like you just can't do that. That's not living. That's, that's making sure you don't get hurt. That's not living. There's a big distinction. There's a big difference, you know, I I remember hearing a podcast about um, OCD and he was like, there's the people who are afraid of falling, um, you know, or, or getting hurt. What did he say? There's the people who are afraid of, of tripping. So they just lay on the ground. Love that. And I was like, oh my God, that's me. And I was like, I can't do that anymore. I don't want to just lay on the ground my whole fucking life. Like you can ensure that you're not going to fall, but what the fuck is that? You're not a worm. Like get the fuck up. Like, come on. <laughs> you're not. A- oh my gosh. Oh, my eyes are watering again. <laughs> yes. You are not a fucking worm. Get the fuck up. Yes. 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 Like what an iconic statement, but that's such a good, and both of those are such beautiful analogies because it's like, yeah, it's like, if you're the parent that's like, oh my God, no, we can never take the training wheels off the bike because you might, it's possible that you might fall over and skin your knee and that would be the worst thing in the world. It's like, no, like that's how kids learn their own boundaries. It's like, if you are a child who like never dares to swing on the monkey bars or like attempt, it's like, you never learn like, oh, you know what? That, you know, jump or that leap, maybe that's a little bit, that I'll leave that for the professionals and I'm not going to do that because I will break my back if I do that. But it's like, you'll never learn. You'll never like understand yourself if you don't take off the training wheels or if you never like, you know, get out of your worm state and like actually stand up and start walking. It's like, if you spend your entire life laying down, it's like, okay, cool. You can see like the sky and like the clouds, which are beautiful. And like, that's great. That's a really, really simple, ordinary life. But it's like, you could, you could also stand up and walk a little bit and like, see some magic, do some traveling, see some people. And it's just, I really love that. I think it's so beautiful. And also even just the idea of, you know, like we do get to reparent ourselves in a way, but again, not in the obsessive, like checking in on your inner child every three seconds, but every single little thing you do ever to be like, is this okay? Is my inner child like ever so slightly uncomfortable? And if so, then like we won't move. It's like, yes, like have, have grace for your inner child, love your inner child. It's like, especially it's like, so many of us we've been through fucking shit (laughs) like we've been through trauma (laughs) like it's like intense and it's still not a reason to never let yourself live again because you're scared to get hurt and it's it's like meeting yourself with love and grace and tenderness but also not being afraid like sometimes love it's not like the coddly like I'm just gonna hug you and hold you and let you cry for like 10 years sometimes the love is like we're taking the training wheels off, like move. Like I'm thinking of like, there's actually a baby bird, a robin's nest that was on our- I was house. just going to bring up baby birds. Yes. <laughs> yes. Same soul frequency. Like I was, I was having this, okay, I want to hear what you have to say, but I have this memory of, there was this robin family and there were four babies and there was the mama and the papa as well. And like everyone else had fledged the nest. Yeah. There was one little baby left yeah. and I, I, have a, I have to find back this video and make it into a fucking reel because it's epic. But it's like this one little bird that's like, he looks over and he's like, Fuck. and like all of his little siblings are on the ground. Like, and the mom is like, and finally the mom literally came, landed on the nest and was like, mm. yeah, she, she booted him out. And he was like, Fuck. 
but then he landed on the ground and he was like this is cool (laughs) please find that real like that video for a real because that is genius I was just gonna say like a bird is not gonna have like an 18 year old fucking baby bird in her nest still like bro get the fuck out me and your dad have like bird shit to do like get the fuck out of here you know what I mean like that does not happen and I love what you were saying about like checking in on your inner child every three seconds it's like sometimes I think we're helicopter parenting our inner child and that's not healing that is not helpful do you know what I mean like she's like can you fuck off and leave me yeah, alone? yeah it's like I'm- leave, let me breathe <laughs> I'm trying to go through puberty or like whatever like you know you some privacy yeah. mom yeah yes Ugh. wait this is I- so good. getting like so oh. wrapped up Ugh. I fucking love this like the fact the idea that we can helicopter parents our own inner child like it's so tr- I've definitely been in that phase mm-hmm. especially again in like my autoimmune healing days when I was like it was just like it's just intense and, and again it's like it it doesn't do anyone any good like the parent who's helicopter parenting their child it's like being so hyper vigilant and like always like watching out and like projecting the what if worst case scenario right which again it's like having grace for ourselves if you're a person that does tend to project the what if worst case scenario it's like we literally do so in order to try to protect ourselves from pain again that we may have experienced in the past like it makes so much sense and we can honor that without living our whole lives laying on the ground like a fucking worm (laughs) Without letting yourself continue to, I feel like we get to acknowledge the things that like are less than favorable, the the ways we behave. And then we also get to be like, and that's not an excuse to continue doing it. Like, I I love you. I shed so much grace on you and you don't have to change overnight. Um, I mean, I feel like that's a big part of how I've gotten to be where I'm at. And I'm sure for you, the same is like, it's not through like punishing ourselves for being the way we were that didn't work or yeah. was the most operable it's like shedding so much light and love and being like this does make so much sense and also having that discipline or like that masculine energy I just think of Brandon because he's very like masculine and like he won't let me run off into the weeds you know he's like okay that's enough of your excuses like that's complete like you're done <laughs> <laughs> the same way. <laughs> like right? with love it's like all right like no, we're not, we're not going to tolerate this. <laughs> and I think having a little bit of that intolerance for bullshit behavior for yourself is important, you know, yeah. not a crazy amount, but like, like there's some intolerance, like lines in the sand that you need with yourself of like, okay, like put the self-help book down, <laughs> like, yeah. and go like touch a tree or like smile at somebody because I don't know about you. I've read a lot of self-help books. There's like I can name on one hand the ones that actually made a difference. Mm-hmm. Most of them are fucking fluffy bullshit that never make an impact. You know, just a waste of time. And I'm like, yeah. oh, when's the thing, the magical thing that's going to happen in this book that's going to change me, you know? And then it's yeah. not. Well, and, and also then it's like we start to outsource our power to gurus or to the authors of these books or to coaches or to mentors or to the industry at large and it's just like or like really checking in and being like where does my power reside is it within my own heart or is it somewhere out there and if it's somewhere out there it's like what gets to shift so that the power gets to return <sighs> return yeah. to and it's like oh even as I say that I'm like oh I'm calling my power back like call it back. <laughs> calling it back if you're watching on YouTube you'll see us we're calling our power back to us yeah <laughs> we're gonna take it <laughs> I feel like this should be like a practice like this hand motion of like extend your arms out wide and then grip and then pull your power back to I feel like we're like channeling some embodiment yeah, right? Right <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've been playing with more recently like doing like like I you know sometimes I go to the park and I'll like sit on a little blanket and I like do my EFT tapping or I'll like put my headphones on and I'll kind of like dance but I've been dancing in public more often and it's fucking lit I'm just like oh my god like I feel like this is again like living this is me living and being like I don't give a fuck I am my music I was dancing at the airport not like super aggressive although probably next time that's my goal is just be like fuck it like I want to spread the joy and the life to the people around me, even if they think I'm weird. It doesn't matter. Like, that's my favorite thing to do is like um, when me and Brandon go to Target, 
and we're walking around and then grabbing one of like the big bouncy balls and like we throw it to each other through the aisles and stuff and just like grab the hula hoops and hula hoop and stuff and like yeah. you know people around and we're just like living our lives you know <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it spreads as a joy. I mean, occasionally people are like, ew, what are those people doing? And it's like, I hope the joy reaches your soul. <laughs> but yeah. it's like, a lot of times it like inspires people. Like they giggle and they're like, look at those adults playing. That's cute. And it's like, can we normalize adults playing? Like I want to play on fucking playgrounds. Like oftentimes when you walk by a playground and it's like children from like, you know, three to nine only. And you're like, can I pass as a nine-year-old? <laughs> Neil's like, no, babe, I'm sorry. You can't. <laughs> Right. It's like, why though? We had that in Mexico. There was a game room and they were like, um, sorry, it's 17 and under, I guess. Cause there were some drunk Americans that came and were like crazy rowdy. And they were like, okay. Um, but <laughs> why? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't play in the game room. And, well, um, as you were speaking, one other question dropped in and, and even coming back to our parallel, our parallel soul frequencies and the ways in which we've let ourselves and walked but also even considering okay it's like when we put down the healing weapons if they have in fact become weapons put them down allow ourselves to live I'm curious when you did that when you started to like just fucking live and enjoy I'm curious what opened up for you like did you have new epiphanies about your soul work did you have more nurturing relationships like what opened up when you just started to fucking live because I really like I want to like give people evidence like this matters like live like so much opens up when you live oh my god it does matter so much and I feel like this ties back you asked me a question a while back and and we just had a blast we just like spin on tangents and tangents and tangents that's the whole point of this <laughs> oh my god I live for it but I was like I'm holding on to it because I was like that's a good one you you brought up entrepreneurship and how this ties into like yes, yes, business. Yes. So I'm like, before we end, I want to bring that yeah, up. Let's, let's circle back to that. I feel like this, that's so important. Yeah. I forgot I asked that. No, no, no. But with exactly what you just said, what opened up, I feel like, I mean, it had an impact on every aspect of my life. I feel like it really started to take place. And I don't even know that it was conscious, but it was like, I've seen other people that like live their life. And I was like, I want this. And so hot girl IRL came through and I was, like okay put your phones in the drawer and like make contact with life and I was like god I love this and it was like this low ticket thing it was a hundred dollars but it was like still a low ticket offer and I was like it was just for fun and just for pleasure and I don't know about you but it's so easy in business to make things that you're good at or that will make money but not that you love or even that you know that people want and that's scary territory to be in and I think that's um, that's a pitfall that a lot of entrepreneurs, most entrepreneurs make. It's like, oh, I'm good at this. It'll make money or the people want it. But it's mm-hmm. do I really derive tons of joy from this, right? And so when I kind of stepped into this place, it, because I, like, you know, I was living under the shadow of Launch Slut, my other program from a year ago. I was I was, God, I was battling that so hard all the way through. I mean, from a year, not a whole year, but, um, last fall through the spring of this year. And I was just like, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to make it. Like, I'm just, I'm a one hit wonder. I'm a, this, I'm a, that are people ever going to buy from me again? Like, and then somehow hot girl IRL came through and was like, just for joy, just for pleasure, prioritize friendships, prioritize my health my happiness. And somehow it just, the need to like hit 10 K months just for the fuck of it, or like to prove my worth or to be happy fell off. And I just started doing what I loved to do. And I was like, started making bracelets. And I started like doing hot girl IRL, meeting with friends, going to yoga, going for walks, like just having pleasure in my life and not giving a fuck about like, business or money like really for a whole season you know um and I feel like that gave me so much creative space where I was able to really recalibrate myself and the stories in my head to like what actually makes me happy and what do I really want to do and I've gotten to a place where I'm like I don't care about this luxury apartment I want a part-time job at like Barnes and Noble, not for the money, but the money's great. Like I want to just have fun. Like I don't even give a shit. I want to, 
right? I want to make bracelets for like $20. I want these offers. Like I want these little baby offers. I have another brand coming through and it's just created so much space for creative liberation. Um, and I think that's what so many entrepreneurs are starving for because we get pigeonholed into like what makes money, what we think people want from us. And then it's no better than a nine to five except you're the one making yourself miserable. That's terrible. And then we're like, well, I fucking hate this. I see so entre- so many entrepreneurs are like, what the fuck? This sucks. This is not what I wanted. And I'm like, yeah, you're not doing what you love, you know? And, and to really give yourself that space, I get it. Like, that's not easy. And I was lucky that like, honestly, I don't even know how I was able to survive Brandon big time, like financially. And, and I don't know how like money was still coming through, but it was. And I was just able to be like, okay, you know? Um, and I think we need that as creatives. I think when our art is is our livelihood, we have to be really careful. Um, and we have to like really protect that at all costs. And if that means having a part-time job or something, I think that's more important than weaponizing your art against yourself because that is going to lead you to burnout and misery quicker than anything else you know (laughs) yes I I know this so intimately I feel like my whole soul just like melted the whole time you were speaking Chelsea because I feel like this is it's just so monumentally important because it is so true that so many entrepreneurs it's like they start a business because they're like I'm gonna do my soul work But then somehow the soul work starts to get a bit twisted and whether it's like the hyper focus on money and ever growing and ever expanding, which of course is just a toxic part of our industry, right? That we get to acknowledge like this, like, like what is even even with like a 10K month? It's like when you think about it, it's like a 10, if you're making 10K months, one, it's like thinking about how much are you spending? (laughs) Like, what is your profit margin? You know, I feel like people get so lost and like everyone else is making 10K months and it's like, but people are over there thinking like, oh my God, but it's like, well, you don't actually know. Like maybe they have $5,000 of expenses and they're only pocketing $5,000, which is still like amazing. But it's like, sometimes we can get hijacked by like the shiny object syndrome of like, oh, the money, oh, the fame, oh, the whatever. But it's like, if you have to sell your soul as a result of getting those things, it's like, is it worth it? And the same thing, it's like, if you're the one that's making yourself miserable at your own business, it's like, something ain't right here. Like, I don't think anyone's like, I'm be an entrepreneur so I can make myself miserable. It's like, yes. I don't like, think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like a cuckold. We cuckold ourselves. And it's like, ugh, it's not, it's not the vibe. And it, it, I feel like it, it does a number on our self-trust and our self-worth and our relationship to self, you know? And that's, scary it's damaging and so we have to be able to somehow create a space where we have creative freedom and I know that's not easy you know what I mean like it's it's not easy to be able to be like what do I really want to do beneath it all you know not what's going to make money or make people happy like what am I really actually craving and that can take a minute to meditate on um and it doesn't mean you have to stop selling all of your offers right away. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not like quit everything all at once and just go work at whatever. But it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, I think even you speaking to the fact that it can be really scary. Like even for me, like earlier this year, it was back in January when I was living alone in Mexico. And I was just like, I think I need to pause. Like I, rec- I started to recognize, like, I feel like my business is bringing me further away from myself. And I was like, I don't think my soul is purring as much. Like, I don't feel the delight that I used to feel in my business. And I was like, am I really going to continue to walk on a path that is like dimming the of my soul? Or am I going to pause, let myself slow down, you know, make less money, like grow less community or whatever it is, all these like external metrics that we focus on in order to like, what, like make ourselves happy. It's like, or you can find your happiness in the small moments that you spend with yourself and your loved ones and your friends and meeting strangers throughout the day. It's like, I feel, and I I love that you talked about this, like the in real life, like hot in real life. Like it's like, oftentimes, especially as online entrepreneurs, there can also be the elements of isolation and loneliness where you have like this thriving online business and you're making all the money and tons and tons of people are flooding into your programs. And you're like, whoa, I'm so connected. So many humans in my space, but it's like, I'm sorry, but like meeting on a Zoom room, 
it's just like fucking different than like hugging your friends in person even like having met you in person and stuff it's like being in this zoom room is fucking epic and like waddling around austin together eating food and like taking pictures of ourselves eating french fries and red meat it's like it, that was different it was a different vibe it was a different nutrient this is still nourishing and eating french fries and burgers together was just nourishing in a different way it's so much more fulfilling and that satiating I mean even being on a screen it's like it hurts your eyes it like what up like who knows you know what I mean it's not the same it's amazing and not this specifically but I feel like a lot of these things they're hollow compared to real life they'll never compare you cannot just live on a screen you know I don't think and well, you can't receive all of your fulfillment solely from your business because then if no. something happens in your business and you make less money and you're like <gasps> everything is wrong it's like Again, maybe it's not a problem that you made less money this month than you did last month. Like, right? why is that a problem? Who gives a shit? And that I think is one of the biggest shifts that I had too with this um, shift. It was a shift in values, a shift in priorities because my business was on the pedestal of my life and my focus. It was business, 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 business because that's the water we we swim in. You know, like that's what everyone's doing. And so it can be really easy and it's very masculine. It's a very masculine way to live, to put mm -hmm. your work and your business and finances at the top of your priority list. That is not naturally a feminine way to be, in my opinion. The, the feminine values creativity, freedom, connection, life masculine values, work, productivity, whatever, right? That that's just true. Um, and I don't think most feminine beings are meant to have work as the sole focus of their life. Now, don't, I'm not saying certain people and there's certain times of our lives where we, it is important to put it first, right? Like I did need to, to build what I've built now. And I'm glad yeah. that I well. You know what I mean? My business was a priority for a while, but it's the yes. fact that I never like allowed it to kind of sink down on my period pyramid yes. of priorities and like kind of be like, oh, maybe I'm gonna let bird watching actually be at the top of the pyramid for a season, right? And it's like again, even the idea that we go in seasons, like there might be seasons where your business is closer to the top of your priorities, but if you never ever spend time to be like, is there another priority that wants my love and attention that would nourish my soul? It's like that's where we start to get into trouble. Yes. And allowing like allowing that cyclical flow. And sometimes you will just be in your masculine so that I'm not judging that at all because I've done it and it was so important. And then you build the foundations of your business and it actually doesn't need to be the top priority. But we forget because like you said, all these shiny metrics and people are shouting 10K months, 100K, 10 minutes. and this. And that. <laughs> okay. Like, and they're getting Mercedes and they're getting the luxury bags and they're getting the this and they're doing the that. And it's like, I think a lot of times we got lost. We get lost. I got lost. I don't even think got lost I, too. I don't think I ever actually probably desired a luxury apartment, but literally I saw a fucking influencer have a luxury apartment and I think it got stuck in my head. And I was like, I need to have that. And now mm -hmm. what we pay an insane exorbitant amount of money on this place. And I'm like, where the fuck is all my money? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like, it's going down the drain for this place that you live in. And that's fine. And I did it, right? But I don't fucking want this shit. And I think it's really hard to like hear what we actually want and value in this space because there's so many archetypes that are um, pedestalized and like, you know, like really shown in our faces. Yeah. Um, but we're like, I guess I want a luxury bag and a luxury apartment and a this and a that and a and hundred million dollar month. Like, I guess that matters most to me. And it's like, yeah. then we burn out and we're like, fuck, I don't even care about this. I want a fucking garden and I want to hug someone and I want chickens. Like, it's like, well, where the fuck did that come from? Like, you know, yeah. and I think muting people, unfollowing people, all of that's important. I showed you that post that I have that's like, I don't. I don't even follow and you taught me this. I don't even listen or keep up with like my favorite friends, my favorite coaches content <laughs> most of the time because it's, it deludes my, dilutes my channel, my flow, my psyche, and I'm fragile and I'm sensitive and it matters. And then I get to choose like, oh, I want to go look at Michelle's stuff or Rebecca's stuff or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for that because like, you were the one that like really brought that up. You and Rebecca both. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait. I can mute you guys, even though I love you. I'm like, oh, it won't take a time at all. It doesn't matter. It's like, yes. 
I, oh, I love that you brought that up because it is like, sometimes it can bring up like the sisterhood wounds of like, oh my God, they're going to get offended and they're not going to like me and they're going to think I hate them. And it's like, why do we, why do we go to that place? Why is it, why is it a bad thing to like protect your own channel and your own energy? Like, why is that? Why it like, I'm the same way. Like I actively choose like for my friends, my people, cause I, I there are certain people I fucking, I'm like, I want to know what you're up to. I want to know your stories. I want to see your posts. Like, but I will go to your page when I want to. And I'll like, be like, and I'll like receive the dose of like Chelsea medicine and be like, Wee! oh my God, that I was love amazing. it. You like blow me up. It's like, you know, just from time to time, I'll get these like Michelle love explosions in my feed. And I'm just like, ah! <laughs> it's like even better, honestly, because I know you're intentionally going to enjoy what I have to offer. You're not just unconsciously like, 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 yeah. scroll, scroll, like, scroll, yeah. like, unconsciously just letting it like pour into your fucking psyche it's like you're just like intentionally like I want to read this you know yeah we're not meant to fucking watch a million people shit every fucking day anyway either so much consuming so much under um producing creating you know it's like ugh. I don't want to know what everyone in my industry is doing. Fuck that shit. Because if I'm knowing what everyone else is doing, I know that I'm not doing anything, you know? And then I'm going to feel like shit. <laughs> oh, oh my God. It's so, so, so true. It's just like, when I go onto my Instagram, all of my like favorite accounts are like my bird accounts where it's just like cute birds, like riding on slippers. <laughs> like, honestly, I opened my Instagram this morning and the first video I saw was a green cheek conure, the same as my old bird bow riding on a slipper and I was just like honestly like that's what I want to fucking see I want to see cutie birds doing cutie bird stuff because that's like that's that's what inspires my soul per way of being not seeing what like 30 bajillion thousand other coaches are like you need to do this to make your business three tips for xyz it's just like all that stuff is beautiful and there's a time and a place I, I feel like it's the same way like I don't want to necessarily like live in like the Smithsonian and like be forced to look at all of the art all the time because then it's like it loses this like special magic of it if you're literally just like if I were to just wake up every day and someone be like you need to stare at this Rembrandt all day long that's all you're allowed to do just stare at it I'd be like I mean I'll admire it for a while but like eventually you start to become like it, it dulls the magic of it versus like when we intentionally visit the art gallery which is what I feel like Instagram is it's just like it's the ethereal art galleries of all the fellow humans and aliens and mermaids and hoes that are out there it's like when we bring intention to it, it's like, it's an event. It's so much more enjoyable. Like, I feel like it's an event when I go on your page and I like, love you up. I'm like, <laughs> like it brings me like a burst of joy versus if I were to just be like on there all the time, like consuming all the time. And even like, again, coming back to like human history, like humans, we did not regularly interact with thousands and thousands and thousands of people on the regular. Like we oh, interacted oh. In, in our communities with people in real life. And it's just coming home to like the truth that we are part of nature and like it's like trees aren't like looking at all the thousands of other trees and every other forest on the planet like that would be really overwhelming <laughs> really overwhelming and it's not necessary it's like uh I I agree I'm just like yes 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 yeah. I didn't tell you the um there's a bird story to our engagement story did you know that oh wait, what I'm like, my, my, like, my inner bird was like, but there's a bird, there's a bird. <laughs> okay, so shameless plug, and you can totally edit this out if you want, but. Oh, no, no, please story, plug all the things. Yeah, the engagement story will be on, on me and Brandon's podcast, uh, the whole thing, but I'll get a little snippet, because I promise the internet, this is the only place it'll live, so. He needs a, a little preview. A little and I'm like, I've, I've wanted to share it with you every time we interact, I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, okay, I'll wait. Um, okay, so we were at the cenote in Mexico, and also it was in Mexico, which is like your happy place. Yeah, like I Mexico has so much medicine, the culture, the oh. earth, everything there, the people, beautiful, magical. It is so good. Um, so we're at a cenote, um, and we're having this beautiful moment. He hadn't proposed yet, and we're sitting there. I'm just so in the moment, and I'm just like, oh. And Brandon got the whole thing on film. I'm just like, enjoy. I'm like, this is so cool. I feel so alive, Brandon. Like, it's amazing. And there's this um, bird's nest that's built on the tree hanging over the water. Um, and it's a big bird's nest. And you can hear the birds. The mom was making a lot of noise. There's little birds in this nest that we could see. And then the mama bird flies away and she goes and she grabs she finds a baby lizard and then she starts smacking its head on like a 
I know it sounds crazy, but no, I'm like, I'm, I'm not averse to like violent bird murder right? to eat food. Cause it's, it's like the cycle of, it's like the cycle of life. Like squirrels die so that hawk babies can eat. Like it's just the way yes. it is. It's just what happens. And so it was so beautiful and cool to like watch. She's like killing this baby lizard and we're like, yeah, get it. You know? And I'm like, and yeah, then I was like, okay, kind of. I was like, it's kind of fucked up that she's gonna feed her baby a baby li- a, a mama lizard's baby, but uh we can <laughs> in <the> nature. <laughs> in nature goes. It is. And so she's like doing this and she kills it and then she goes and flies back and like feeds her babies. And you can hear them. And anyway, after he proposed and I said yes, if you listen to the video again, I think a lot of people will think that it's me making a sobbing noise, but it's not. Um all the animals start like cheering and the birds start making noise after I say yes. And you can hear like all these animals. It's so cool. And there's just these bird, these baby birds and the mama bird. It was just such a cool moment. So magical. <laughs> I'm literally crying right now. I'm like, the animals were cheering for your engagement. Like they felt the love and the magic in the air and they got excited about it because animals do, they know. Like, like, I feel like whenever I'm on client calls or something and Luna P's like awake, he's like, I want to be part of the magic. Like what's going, like the human connection. I want it. Like, wait, I'm going to go, I'm like going to run back and like rewatch the video. Also like, yeah, it's like everybody like run to Chelsea and Brandon's podcast. I know I will be, I will be running there <laughs> to just listen to the two of you because the two of you together are just pure magic and oh thank you for sharing that with me Chelsea like my 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 inner bird soul (laughs) that actually the last thing I'll just mention for those of you that are watching on YouTube you'll get to see my bracelet if you're not then you can find it on Instagram but Chelsea actually brought beads to our recent retreat and I made a bracelet that says happy ho but it also says soul purr and I wear this bracelet every day Chelsea and it reminds me to one live my happy ho life but also live my life in a way that makes my soul purr and I feel like that's like that's like some of your deepest medicine it's just helping people remember how to appreciate the small moments made sacred with self but also the moments made sacred with other human beings and that connection even like that story with your engagement it's like you brought life to that forest to that jungle with you and Brandon's love like you literally touched the animals around you with your excitement and I'm just like holy fuck like I feel like that story is so emblematic of the medicine you have for the planet it's just like you make animals and people wherever you go (laughs) that's just like who you are okay and very very last quick story that I'll tell I think I told you this on the mastermind call and then we will close out with magical celebrations but for those of you that don't know Chelsea and I went jet skiing together in Austin after the retreat that we went on and (laughs) I was like jet skiing first and I was kind of like I didn't just I've only just skied once when I was like a baby or like a child and I was like I'm nervous and like I don't can I do this like can I go faster and like Chelsea was encouraging me and then we switched and Chelsea was driving for a while and she was just like all right like I'm gonna show you like how we jet ski and like this bitch went off like she was like full speed circle torpedo and I was like holding on like screaming and in joy and delight at the top of my lungs I was like like I feel like I came so alive and then we switched back and then I was like fuck I'm gonna do yeah I was like and it just like I feel that's another one of your nutrients Chelsea it's like you bring this like play lightness and fun but I feel like you also kind of you embolden people to be courageous in their lives like and that's just like one small example of like you emboldened me to be more courageous in having the fucking time of my life on this jet ski while we were there and so I just want to to reflect to you just the the absolute medicine and magic that you bring not only to my life but to everyone that's going to listen to this podcast and all the beautiful souls that you touch via the online realms but also in the in real life realms I just cherish you and it's been such a gift to, to have you here and for any any like last threads or anything else that wants to come through for you before we close out and tell everyone where where to find you if they somehow don't know already <laughs> oh my god after you dumped all that love on me I'm supposed to speak yeah, like, I'm like ah I'm like comatose from love I'm just like ah, thank you I love you I witnessed your projector self just pouring just outpouring so like you are just so such a beautiful soul and like oh being reflected by you is is truly one of the treasures of life like genuinely oh I was now I love comatose like 
<laughs> this was such a joy. Honestly, do I have any extra little bits? I don't think so. I feel like we really hit everything. Um, I will say like being on podcasts lately, I've been, I guess this would be the third since this transition into like this like living sphere, personal development disruptor, whatever you want to call it. Like pot being on podcasts has been so much more enjoyable. I because I just feel like I'm like in my element speaking to what I actually want to talk about. And before, you know, we've talked about this on the calls with Rebecca. I was just like half an inch off. I, and I feel like I was the exact same though. It was like know, a it's, few degrees. <laughs> it's just like a ringing in your ear. It's like you're doing like what you think is right, but it's a fucking ringing in your ear and it's kind of driving you crazy. But you're, you're getting all the positive feedback that like, oh, yes. God, you're so good at this. And you're like, I am. But just yeah. because you're doing something doesn't mean that you have to make it your business. <laughs> oh, it does not. And so like being able to shift and like, I'm I'm certain that it could have never happened a moment sooner. Um, But since this like shift and like all the puzzle pieces come through, being on podcast has just been such a joy. Like, and just thank you for having me and just- being a soul sister and someone that is so lovely and fun and playful and like safe and real and like, oh, that's another thing I feel like that's the last thing I'll say with this whole like healing is dead. Um, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> it's so harsh, but I'm like, healing is dead. Well, I feel like it's just like the age of personal development where people become obsessed with personal development and healing. Like that era gets to die because that's unhealthy hardcore die and like real healing is like living and like being with other people but I really feel like that gets to happen to the deepest level when you surround yourself with safe fucking people and that's not an easy journey to get to right you have to learn to recalibrate yourself to that that love especially if you grew up with you know any kind of you know chaos or whatever um but surrounding myself with healthy people such as yourself and safe people, it's like you actually, you're not like constantly low grade on high alert. Because yeah, like walking on eggshells, like, am I going to get mad? It's like, no, yes. it's like repair with soul people is easy. And it's like, even if like, let's say yes. some, I mean, like we did have a get a crunchy moment one time. Yes. And it was just like, it was fine. It was so fine. It was <laughs> so easy. And I love that you said that. Like, what did you just say? You said, um, repairing with soul people is easy yeah. I feel like that's something Rebecca may have said one time mm. I feel like Rebecca like maybe said that about like coaching containers or something along those lines but it's it's so true it's like inevitably when you when you're in close intimate relations with the people I mean like even Neil and I have tiffs sometimes where we're like <laughs> but it's like yeah. repair is easy because we fucking love each other and there's like a depth of love there that even when like little frictiony moments or like little like oh that hurt moments happen it's like you can voice them. You can be seen. You can be heard. You feel safe to bring things forward. And, and like you said, it's not an easy journey. One to like open yourself up to receive like that unconditional love from another person when it actually feels safer to be like, oh, maybe I'd rather be friends with a person that maybe like could just like drop me at any second yeah. because that's chaotic. And it's like, no, 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 no. You get to have yourself with people that make you feel loved. Yeah, and if you feel, I think that too, like you're saying, like if there's like little, like we were even talking to Rebecca yesterday, yellow flags. Mm -hmm. flags like I, I recalibrating yourself to trust that shit and and that's something the personal development industry can can fuck so hard to hell is like the at least from my experience it was like those red flags those yellow flags like someone would trigger me and it would be like oh well that's a trigger point for you you're projecting mm -hmm. onto other people it's like no 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 if you sense something weird coming from another fucking person trust that you're right 100% of the time be on your own fucking side that's what Rebecca's taught me and like mm -hmm. be willing to let people go and like you know use your discernment but it's like trust the fuck out of yourself if something feels off it is if something feels weird, it is. And I think Rebecca was the one that said that to me. Um, and it's been so healing, but I have to remind myself over and over and over again and not gaslight myself. Like, well, am I just projecting some wound onto them? Or is this somehow me? Or like, how do I need, I need to work through my triggers. And it's like, you no, know, sometimes people just do gross shit that you don't deserve and you don't have to put up with. Oh, yes. And I feel like as people pleasers, we can do that where we're like, oh, but like, they're still a good person and they're just going to uh, 
And it's like, just because someone's going through their own shit doesn't mean you need to tolerate their shit in your sphere. It's like, oh, bless and release, wish them the best. And like, yeah. you have to let people go and you have to let relationships dissolve because then you have more space for like divine, beautiful, magical relationships where you feel really safe and really loved. Like you have the space for those to come into your life. So they're easy. They actually are easy. You know what I mean? And there can be repair, but it's like so much easier and natural and yeah it's oh yeah letting people go like oh fuck there was something I wanted to say but I'm gonna let it go because it's gone it's gone Ugh, I hate when it happens <laughs> <laughs> well I always well maybe it'll come back but I always love to close out well I feel like I'll go let everything calls lives podcasts with like what do you want to celebrate and acknowledge about yourself oh my god what do I want to celebrate and acknowledge um I I you know what? Just I feel like how I'm navigating through life lately in this season of just um, I feel like there's a lot less gripping for me and there's a lot less or there's a lot more surrendering to like God's plan because um, that was a huge source of pain for me in my life. I was like Chelsea's way and I had a plan and things were supposed to go like this. And when they didn't match up, like when reality did not match up to what I had in my head. Um, I threw a fucking conniption fit. Like I would just lose my absolute mind. There was so much stress and anxiety and rage in my body. Um, and now being able to like really like let go and trust that even if it doesn't look the way I think it should, or it looks like a problem or it shouldn't have gone this way. It's like, God has a plan and I'm really like softening into that. It's been so incredible you know e even looking at condos and stuff it's like I want to live in this condo and then it's like oh they don't want large dogs and it's like a month before our lease is up and I can hear old threads of Chelsea being like well we're gonna make it work anyway like you know <laughs> what I mean? and it's like no like they're like if not this then there's something better like we will get exactly what we're meant to get and I think that little survival Chelsea, which I think I, I, I told you about, it's like, I got to get mine and I got to make sure. And like, you know what I mean? Like I got to get taken care of and make sure that I'm taken care of. And then it all worked like, and just being able to like, let that go and just like soften. That's been like something I'm really proud of. Wow. I feel like as you were speaking, I like my whole, like my whole body, I feel like I like sunk back in my chair. Like I felt my heart space open. Like it's just so beautiful. And it's such a gift to witness you in and all of this also the whole time you were speaking a little spider was like crawling on my windowsill so I feel like the animals you're you're just calling to them Chelsea <laughs> like everyone is arriving but I will link Chelsea's Instagram in the show notes and as well as you know if you love the engagement story one run to Chelsea's Instagram now and I'm I'm about to go do that myself so I can listen for all the animals to cheer you on cheer you on but also I'm so excited for you and Brandon's podcast to launch so everyone be on the lookout for that so we can all go show them the utmost love and excitement because <laughs> the two of you together is just like oh, a blessing to the world amazing wait do you have anything that you're celebrating yourself for I know we're going over but I want to know you I'm celebrating my I, very similar for navigating a lot of really big life transitions with a lot of grace and a lot of magic. And at this, at the time this episode is coming out, probably I will have not shared some of those things yet, but they will be shared soon. And I'm, I'm really excited. So I'm celebrating myself for being willing to slow down and soften and sink into the gift of my own grace. That's what I'm celebrating. Mm. Thank you for asking that question, Chelsea. I received. Oh, and for anyone that's listening, feel free to DM us and tell us what you are celebrating. Yes. And as always, feel free to screenshot and like tag us and be like, bitches, I was listening to your episode and it rocked my world. <laughs> or any takeaways you have. <laughs> All right, loves. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>